My dream is to see the mining, mining industry lead the global industrial sector out of global warming and to provide the goods and the energy the rest of the world needs. And how do you hope to achieve that? To be perfectly simple, we need to move the world on from fossil fuels. And when we demonstrate, which we will, that you can do it and lower your operating costs and increase your production and become more profitable, then there won't be a shareholder out there who will tolerate a chief executive who says, I'm just going to do it the old way, thanks, mate. They'll say, you can do it the old way in retirement. Twiggy and I, yeah, we get on pretty well at times. Um, <laughs> look, he's a, he's a hard-headed Australian maverick dude. I love him, right? He's exactly what you'd expect an Australian entrepreneur from West Australia to be like. And that has its pros and cons. I'll be pretty honest about his own pros and his own cons. And um, people probably say similar things about me. And, uh, yeah, we get, on, we get on pretty well. What's Twiggy's greatest con? What's his greatest con? Um, probably like me, he's not very good at, at mincing his words. He can be, can be pretty straight up and um, sometimes that gets you into a bit of trouble. Um, maybe that's a strength too. It's probably why we get on well, right, I would say. Like, we're pretty honest with each other. Um, I think I'd probably say that is honesty. This is a pro and a con. What is your view of big industry leading the charge on this as opposed to, to government? My view of big industry leading this is that it's overdue and no one's wanted to go first. So businesses really need to be led by government policy. Getting out in front of a government is kind of a dangerous business practice. But when governments really are not moving, businesses must be prepared to demonstrate that it is both commercial and responsible to make major change. And then governments can come in with policy, which is obviously correct and everyone's a hero. But someone had to go first. Unironically, if we're the lucky country, it's because of the amount of sun we have, the amount of wind we have in our fortuitous geographic position in terms of the Indian Ocean, the sun, etc., and three billion consumers to the north who need our single greatest resources which are our sun, our wind, our talent and our finances. You paint such a, a, a fabulous picture. It must frustrate the hell out of you that not everybody is on board. It's frustrating when people have the experience and ability to understand these issues and refuse to. I've, I find it ironic you're accused of being a kind of a, I don't know, soft-hearted greenie and then a hard-headed capitalist and you're like, Okay, can I be both? Like, why do they have to be different things? Is this a different story? Did they need to be different things? You once said that having a lot of money is actually a burden to do something, something good with it, something that makes a mark with it. Is that what you're talking about today? Have you lifted the burden in some way? Uh, no, probably not. <laughs> not yet? I think you, can, you can't judge people on their choices of what they do with their own resources. I choose to spend mine trying to do the right thing and demonstrate things. Don't get a lot of joy from sitting on a beach and drinking a cocktail, you know, you kind of, it's all right for a day or two. Um, so in some ways this is probably what, what I enjoy doing, right? Um, I do think it's important to show that it's economic. Hello, I'm Tara Brown. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. And don't miss out on our Extra Minutes segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on 9now.com.au and the 9now app.